August 13. Rachel's sadness turns to joy. This is what the Lord says. A cry is heard in Ramah, deep anguish and bitter weeping. Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted, for her children are gone. But now this is what the Lord says. Do not weep any longer. For I will reward you, says the Lord. Your children will come back to you from the distant land of the enemy. There is hope for your future, says the Lord. Your children will come again to their own land. I have heard Israel saying, You disciplined me severely, like a calf that needs training for the yoke. Turn me again to you and restore me, for you alone are the Lord my God. I turned away from God, but then I was sorry. I kicked myself for my stupidity. I was thoroughly ashamed of all I did in my younger days. Is not Israel still my son, my darling child, says the Lord? I often have to punish him, but I still love him. That's why I long for him and surely will have mercy on him. Set up road signs. Put up guideposts. Mark well the path by which you came. Come back again, my virgin Israel. Return to your towns here. How long will you wander, my wayward daughter? For the Lord will cause something new to happen. Israel will embrace her God. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. When I bring them back from captivity, the people of Judah and its towns will again say, The Lord bless you, O righteous home, O holy mountain. Townspeople and farmers and shepherds alike will live together in peace and happiness. For I have given rest to the weary and joy to the sorrowing. At this I woke up and looked around. My sleep had been very sweet. The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will greatly increase the human population and the number of animals here in Israel and Judah. In the past, I deliberately uprooted and tore down this nation. I overthrew it, destroyed it, and brought disaster upon it. But in the future, I will just as deliberately plant it and build it up. I, the Lord, have spoken. The people will no longer quote this proverb. The parents have eaten sour grapes, but their children's mouths pucker at the taste. All people will die for their own sins. Those who eat the sour grapes will be the ones whose mouths will pucker. The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant, though I loved them as a husband loves his wife, says the Lord. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel on that day, says the Lord. I will put my instructions deep within them, and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. And they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, You should know the Lord. For everyone, from the least to the greatest, will know me already, says the Lord, and I will forgive their wickedness, and I will never again remember their sins. It is the Lord who provides the sun to light the day, and the moon and stars to light the night, and who stirs the sea into roaring waves. His name is the Lord of heaven's armies, and this is what he says. I am as likely to reject my people Israel as I am to abolish the laws of nature. This is what the Lord says, Just as the heavens cannot be measured and the foundations of the earth cannot be explored, so I will not consider casting them away for the evil they have done. I, the Lord, have spoken. The day is coming, says the Lord, when all Jerusalem will be rebuilt for me, from the tower of Hananel to the corner gate. A measuring line will be stretched out over the hill of Gerub and across to Goa and the entire area, including the graveyard and ash dump in the valley, and all the fields out to the Kidron Valley on the east, as far as the horse gate, will be holy to the Lord. The city will never again be captured or destroyed. A Message About Elam This message concerning Elam came to the prophet Jeremiah from the Lord at the beginning of the reign of King Zedekiah of Judah. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says, I will destroy the archers of Elam, the best of their forces. I will bring enemies from all directions, and I will scatter the people of Elam to the four winds. They will be exiled to countries around the world. I myself will go with Elam's enemies to shatter it. In my fierce anger, I will bring great disaster upon the people of Elam, says the Lord. Their enemies will chase them with the sword until I have destroyed them completely. 
I will set my throne in Elam, says the Lord, and I will destroy its king and officials. But I will restore the fortunes of Elam in days to come. I, the Lord, have spoken. A Message About Babylon The Lord gave Jeremiah the prophet this message concerning Babylon and the land of the Babylonians. This is what the Lord says. Tell the whole world and keep nothing back. Raise a signal flag to tell everyone that Babylon will fall. Her images and idols will be shattered. Her gods Bel and Marduk will be utterly disgraced. For a nation will attack her from the north and bring such destruction that no one will live there again. Everything will be gone. Both people and animals will flee. Hope for Israel and Judah In those coming days, says the Lord, the people of Israel will return home together with the people of Judah. They will come weeping and seeking the Lord their God. They will ask the way to Jerusalem and will start back home again. They will bind themselves to the Lord with an eternal covenant that will never be forgotten. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray and turned them loose in the mountains. They have lost their way and can't remember how to get back to the sheepfold. All who found them devoured them. Their enemies said, We did nothing wrong in attacking them, for they sinned against the Lord, their true place of rest, and the hope of their ancestors. But now flee from Babylon, leave the land of the Babylonians. Like male goats at the head of the flock, lead my people home again. For I am raising up an army of great nations from the north. They will join forces to attack Babylon, and she will be captured. The enemy's arrows will go straight to the mark. They will not miss. Babylonia will be looted until the attackers are glutted with loot. I, the Lord, have spoken. Babylon, sure fall. You rejoice and are glad, you who plundered my chosen people. You frisk about like a calf in a meadow and neigh like a stallion. But your homeland will be overwhelmed with shame and disgrace. You will become the least of nations, a wilderness, a dry and desolate land. Because of the Lord's anger, Babylon will become a deserted wasteland. All who pass by will be horrified and will gasp at the destruction they see there. Yes, prepare to attack Babylon, all you surrounding nations. Let your archers shoot at her. Spare no arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. Shout war cries against her from every side. Look, she surrenders. Her walls have fallen. It is the Lord's vengeance, so take vengeance on her. Do to her as she has done to others. Take from Babylon all those who plant crops. Send all the the harvesters away. Because of the sword of the enemy, everyone will run away and rush back to their own lands. Hope for God's people. The Israelites are like sheep that have been scattered by lions. First the king of Assyria ate them up. Then King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon cracked their bones. Therefore, this is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says, Now I will punish the king of Babylon and his land, just as I punished the king of Assyria. And I will bring Israel home again to its own land, to feed in the fields of Carmel and Bashan, and to be satisfied once more in the hill country of Ephraim and Gilead. In those days, says the Lord, no sin will be found in Israel or in Judah, for I will forgive the remnant I preserve. The Lord's judgment on Babylon. Go up, my warriors, against the land of Merathaim and against the people of Pekod. Pursue, kill, and completely destroy them as I have commanded you, says the Lord. Let the battle cry be heard in the land, a shout of great destruction. Babylon, the mightiest hammer in all the earth, lies broken and shattered. Babylon is desolate among the nations. Listen, Babylon, for I have set a trap for you. You are caught, for you have fought against the Lord. The Lord has opened his armory and brought out weapons to vent his fury. The terror that falls upon the Babylonians will be the work of the sovereign Lord of heaven's armies. Yes, come against her from distant lands. Break open her granaries. Crush her walls and houses into heaps of rubble. Destroy her completely and leave nothing. Destroy even her young bulls. It will be terrible for them too. Slaughter them all, for Babylon's day of reckoning has come. Listen to the people who have escaped from Babylon as they tell in Jerusalem how the Lord our God has taken vengeance against those who destroyed his temple. Send out a call for archers to come to Babylon. Surround the city so none can escape. Do to her as she has done to others, for she has defied the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. 
Her young men will fall in the streets and die. Her soldiers will all be killed, says the Lord. See, I am your enemy, you arrogant people, says the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies. Your day of reckoning has arrived, the day when I will punish you. O land of arrogance, you will stumble and fall, and no one will raise you up. For I will light a fire in the cities of Babylon that will burn up everything around them. This is what the Lord of heaven's army says. The people of Israel and Judah have been wronged. Their captors hold them and refuse to let them go. But the one who redeems them is strong. His name is the Lord of heaven's armies. He will defend them and give them rest again in Israel. But for the people of Babylon there will be no rest. The sword of destruction will strike the Babylonians, says the Lord. It will strike the people of Babylon, her officials and wise men too. The sword will strike her wise counselors, and they will become fools. The sword will strike her mightiest warriors, and panic will seize them. The sword will strike her horses and chariots, and her allies from other lands, and they will all become like women." The sword will strike her treasures, and they all will be plundered. The sword will even strike her water supply, causing it to dry up. And why? Because the whole land is filled with idols, and the people are madly in love with them. Soon Babylon will be inhabited by desert animals and hyenas. It will be a home for owls. Never again will people live there. It will lie desolate forever. I will destroy it as I destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring towns, says the Lord. No one will live there. No one will inhabit it. Look, a great army is coming from the north. A great nation and many kings are rising against you from far off lands. They are armed with bows and spears. They are cruel and show no mercy. As they ride forward on horses, they sound like a roaring sea. They are coming in battle formation, planning to destroy you, Babylon. The king of Babylon has heard reports about the enemy, and he is weak with fright. Pangs of anguish have gripped him, like those of a woman in labor. I will come like a lion from the thickets of the Jordan, leaping on the sheep in the pasture. I will chase Babylon from its land, and I will appoint the leader of my choice. For who is like me, and who can challenge me? What ruler can oppose my will? Listen to the Lord's plans against Babylon and the land of the Babylonians. Even the little children will be dragged off like sheep, and their homes will be destroyed. The earth will shake with the shout, Babylon has been taken, and its cry of despair will be heard around the world. This is what the Lord says, I will stir up a destroyer against Babylon and the people of Babylonia. Foreigners will come and winnow her, blowing her away as chaff. They will come from every side to rise against her in her day of trouble. Don't let the archers put on their armor or draw their bows. Don't spare even her best soldiers. Let her army be completely destroyed. They will fall dead in the land of the Babylonians, slashed to death in her streets. For the Lord of heaven's armies has not abandoned Israel and Judah. He is still their God, even though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Flee from Babylon. Save yourselves. Don't get trapped in her punishment. It is the Lord's time for vengeance. He will repay her in full. Babylon has been a gold cup in the Lord's hands, a cup that made the whole earth drunk. The nations drank Babylon's wine, and it drove them all mad. But suddenly Babylon, too, has fallen. Weep for her. Give her medicine. Perhaps she can yet be healed. We would have helped her if we could, but nothing can save her now. Let her go, abandon her, return now to your own land, for her punishment reaches to the heavens. It is so great it cannot be measured. The Lord has vindicated us. Come, let us announce in Jerusalem everything the Lord our God has done. Sharpen the arrows, lift up the shields, for the Lord has inspired the kings of the Medes to march against Babylon and destroy her. This is his vengeance against those who desecrated his temple. Raise the battle flag against Babylon. Reinforce the guard and station the watchmen. Prepare an ambush, for the Lord will fulfill all his plans against Babylon. You are a city by a great river, a great center of commerce, but your end has come. The thread of your life is cut. The Lord of heaven's armies has taken this vow and has sworn to it by his own name. Your cities will be filled with enemies, like fields swarming with locusts, and they will shout in triumph over you.